Tonight, I'm going to go over five ways that you can share the gospel with a non-believer, an atheist. Sit back, and I hope you enjoy. I can guarantee that I won't, and for several reasons. First, and possibly most important, learn how to frame a shot, dude! First, don't put your face in the middle of the frame, leaving tons of negative space above it. You want the top of your head to hit the top of the frame. Second, and even more important, vertical video? That's a paddling. It takes your phone, it turns it like this. Now, on to the reasons why this is a terrible way to witness to an atheist. Let's do this. <laughs> Greetings fellow space travelers, Bionic Dance here. I'm sure that most of us have encountered theists who try to convince atheists that their god exists. Not just any old god, but their brand of deity. Thing is, they go about it in really terrible ways. That is, if they really want to get their message across anyway. It seems like most of these preachers live in their own bubble and don't really know their audience. Maybe don't even want to. Start with number one. Don't be shocked and ask a lot of questions. Some atheists like to shock Christians with the fact that they don't believe in God. This brand of atheists pulls the pin on their there is no God grenade and drops it in the middle of a conversation expecting Christians to run for cover. I've had that right below in the comments many, many times, many times where they have said there is no God you worship a false god, you worship a fake god, you live in a fantasy world, da-da-da-da-da, constantly. That is one they use constantly. So, be prepared for that. Don't be phased. I mean, yeah, that's kind of good advice, actually. But being shocked is one thing. How about addressing the actual point? To many of us, it does actually look like you're living in a fantasy world. It might be expressed a bit contemptuously, but religion does claim that some form of magic exists, and that can look a little nutty to some people. As a matter of fact, start asking questions about their atheism. Find out what they mean by atheism. Some are agnostic, but call themselves atheists. Ask questions about their background. Were they raised in church? Do they have any Christian friends? Were, were they educated about atheism? This is both good advice and bad advice. I mean, yeah, ask clarifying questions to make sure you understand the other person's position. But I've encountered too many theists who do nothing but ask questions. When their own views are challenged, they deflect by asking another question instead of answering, doing their best to control the conversation instead of having a genuine two-way back and forth. I've told a few street preachers to fuck off after they do this too many times. If you really want to try to convince an atheist, you're going to have to let them to try to convince you too. We can find common ground and mutual rejection of legalistic religion, a passion for science and reason, and usually an overall positive view of the historical Jesus. But that's not really going to help. The positive view of Jesus, I mean. Even if it turns out that he's a perfectly lovely person, he still seems to me like a fictional character. I can point to lots of people who are paragons of virtue but who don't actually exist. Unless you can show me why Jesus is more real than, say, Superman, having a positive view of the guy isn't going to take the conversation anywhere. Number two, listen deeply. This is important. Listen deeply for the why, the why they are an atheist, why they do not believe in a creator in Christ. This is important. You must listen for the why. This starts out sounding like good advice, but wait for it. Often atheists have a reason other than a reason for becoming an atheist. Listen for it. Sometimes it's anger over losing a loved one. Sometimes they were hurt in, at a church in some way, some church or someone at a church, you know, uh, hurt them in some way, shape, form, or manner. And often there is a why behind the lie of atheism that they are embracing. Uh, 
Ah, this hoary old chestnut. It can't possibly be that they looked at religion's claims and thought that they're a steaming pant load. Nope. They have to be grumpy with the church. They really do believe, but they're just unhappy. Dude, don't go making this assumption. It'll make the conversation go nowhere. It's not true, and it'll just piss off your audience. Seriously, if you start with this assumption, you're going to be your own worst enemy. Number three, connect relation re, re, relationally boy that's a hard word to say connect relationally atheists are real people with real feelings they laugh cry talk and connect like anyone else i think that too many times us christians treat atheists as objects and not people again this starts as good advice but we should heed paul's reminder to Timothy about how to deal with those who disagree with us theologically. No, that's really horrible advice. You can't use the Bible as an instruction manual. You won't convince anyone that the Bible is true by using the Bible because that's the claim that needs proving. This is what I mean when I say that a lot of theists are living in a bubble. They only know how to deal with each other. If you want to convince somebody that you're right, you're going to have to do it on their terms. The fourth one, assume that deep down inside they do believe in God. No, 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 no. Short of saying to beat them with clubs and light them on fire, this is quite possibly the worst advice you could give. I don't think I've ever met anyone who generally rejects the existence of God. Sure, I've met some who claim God doesn't exist uh, or his existence is a lie. But uh, I, I believe deep down that most do believe that there is a God or some spirit being up in the sky or whatever they want to use or the terminology. Uh, why, why do I believe that? Because scriptures make it clear uh, in Romans chapter 1 verse 18 to 21 that there is no real atheist and it goes such as, such as this. Scripture says, scripture says, scripture says. Dude, that's not going to get you anywhere. It doesn't matter what scripture says. If you want to have a productive discussion, you cannot make assumptions about the other side's position, and certainly not one that's based on what's told to you by people with whom you already agree. And you certainly can't go by what you believe about them. You don't live in their heads, and you shouldn't pretend to know them. You don't. Remember when you said that you should treat atheists like people and not objects? This is you not following your own advice, figuratively if not literally. This is no better than me assuming what kind of Christianity is the brand you prefer, because each denomination has its own little dogmatic quirks, and I should no more assume which ones are yours than you should assume mine. They may try to suppress their belief in God, but sooner or later, in the discussion, an atheist says something like, well, if God is so good, then why does he allow this? If God is so good, why does he allow that? This is the point in the conversation where they have forgotten their atheism, and they've realized for some of their challenges with that, not the reality of God, but the nature of God. You couldn't possibly be more wrong. What's happening here is that atheists are showing you problems with your claims. You say that God's nature is a certain way, and what you've said is being challenged by having inconsistencies pointed out to you. Let's again use Superman as an example. If someone said that Supes is 100% invulnerable, and I point out that kryptonite makes him lose his powers, I don't have to believe Superman's real in order to tell them that their point is wrong. So if you tell me that your God is all-knowing, loving, and powerful, I have only to point out suffering in the world to show that your claims are without merit, and I don't have to believe in a God to do it. In fact, what I'm doing is telling you why I don't believe. You've said there's something that exists, and it's like this. I'm saying, I don't see that thing. In fact, I'm seeing things that shouldn't be so if that thing exists. So I think your claims are not true, and that the thing doesn't exist. Number five, the final one. Frame the gospel as a love story that just happens to be true. When I share the gospel, I wasn't trying to prove God's existence. I was simply trying to share the story of God's love. If you're not trying to show us that God is real, that it's just a story, dude, there's better fiction out there and you're just wasting everybody's time. When you talk to atheists, you, you need to tell and you need to listen respectfully and thoughtfully to questions. 
this this is very important. You, you have to use your ears. You have to listen to what they're telling you, and, and, and you know, use God's word, God's love in return. That doesn't sound like listening. That sounds like you nodding your head until it's your turn to talk again. If you are really listening, you wouldn't be making all of these baseless assumptions about what atheists really believe. You need to listen to them. You need to let them get comfortable with you and listen. You know, just listen to what they have to say. That, you know, because what they believe is, is not true. What they believe is a lie. There is a God. He did create this world. He created everything in this world. And when they say, oh yeah, prove it, are you still listening? If they tell you that they don't believe it because it sounds like magical mumbo jumbo, are you still listening? It doesn't sound like it. Not if you're saying that we all do believe in a god really. We apparently don't get to tell you that we really, honestly, genuinely do not believe and have you take us seriously to accept that maybe we don't believe in your stories. Try to explain to me how that's listening. And I'm going to tell you a quick story that will reiterate everything that I said in this video. And that's pretty much all he does for the rest of the video. So, until next time, fellow space travelers, this is Bionic Dance saying don't run on automatic. Instead, please think. Citizens, failure to contribute will result in suspended oxygen privileges. Attention citizens, failure to contribute will result in suspended oxygen privileges. Attention citizens. You've got two choices. You can rate this video and share it everywhere across social media, or I can send my minions after you. Choose wisely.